Shalom, everyone. Praise y'all for you all uh, joining us again today for our weekly Bible study. Uh, praise the Most High for that. Um, this is day number 32 of Counting the Omer. So we're going to jump right into it today. Um, hallelujah. So we're going to jump right into it. We're going we're gonna to read, um, we're going to pray that we're going to read Counting the Omer and get right into the message. Of, uh, knowing your purpose. Amen. So, Yahweh, we thank you for your mercy. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being good to us. Thank you for your love and kindness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Yah, for this day. For this is a wonderful day. It's a day that you've made. And we're rejoicing, still rejoicing and glad in this day. Mm -hmm. Yah, we thank you for your being good to us. Thank you for just loving on us. We pray tonight that as we grow in your word, as we learn your word, that you would teach us. Teach us how to be humble and walk in humility and the fear of you. Help us to grow in our trust in you. Help us to continue to come to an understanding of what your grace is, your has said, uh, is to us your loving kindness. Help us to be convicted by the rule of Hakodesh as we're led and guided into all truth. Yeah, I pray for the families uh, today that, that have, lo have lost loved ones. Um, the family yesterday um, that that lost loved ones, and also also today, mm -hmm. I pray for our young people, y'all. That as school is out um, this summer, for the protection, y'all. I pray that you help us help our young people to stop uh, murdering one another. Mm -hmm. Help help us to wake up and to begin to do something about what's going on in our. Uh, city in the surrounding areas help us to begin to speak up about the drug epidemic that's going on the pills and the heroin you know, that, that, that's especially taking the lives of young people and uh, people uh, gun control of young people shooting one another I pray that you help us to be true leaders, shepherds after your own heart that will speak out against the adversary, against the evil and that we can begin to show the true love of you. So I pray for our communities and I pray for our young people. And I pray that you really help us to be true leaders and not take this for granted, but to really understand your purpose in our life. So we thank you and we just glorify you in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 So this is day number two of um, counting the Omer. Three. Day number 32, excuse me, of counting the Omer. So um, we praise you, O Yah, our El, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by Yahshua the Messiah, our eternal Redeemer and Savior, and commanded us to count the Omer. By faith, we wait with joyful hearts to celebrate the sinning of your Ruach HaKodesh. Hallelujah. Psalm 67 says, Pray, Yah, be merciful to, you, to us and bless us. May you make your face shine toward us so that your way may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. Let the peoples give thanks to you. Yah, let the peoples give thanks to you, all of them. Let the nations be glad and shout for joy, for you will judge the peoples fairly and guide the nations on earth. Let the peoples give thanks to you. Yah, let the peoples give thanks to you, all of them. The earth has yielded its harvest and may Yah our El bless us. May Yah continue to bless us so that all the ends of the earth will fear you. Sitting at the feet of our Messiah Yeshua, are you willing to pay the price? Matthew 10, 32, 32 39 says, Whoever acknowledges me in the presence of others, I would also acknowledge in the presence of my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. Don't suppose that I have come to bring peace to the land. It is not peace I have come to bring, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, so, so that a man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Whoever loves his father or mother more than me, more than he loves me, is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves his son or daughter more than he loves me is not worthy of me. And anyone who does not take up his execution stake and follow me is not worthy of me. 
Who will find his own life will lose it, but the person who loses his life for my sake will find it. Above, Yeshua describes a true statement. Excuse me, he decided to describe the true student, a disciple of his. He, he clearly is telling us that there will be a price for following him. Many want the blessing, but do not want to pay the price. These are very strong words, and during this time of counting the Omer, we need to search our hearts and ask for forgiveness. If we, if we have put others, including our families, before him, I am not saying that we are to ignore our families, but we need to, take, take, we need to keep everything in its proper order. So please do not misunderstand what I'm trying to say because I am including myself as well. We need to count the cost. We want the blessing, but we don't like the ifs. But the ifs are conditional and require obedience. It is only obedience to his word that brings the blessings. So are you willing to pay the price? Are you willing to be transparent before those you serve? Admit when you're wrong and repent if you have offended someone. Are you willing to be accountable to others? Are you willing to be a servant? Are you willing to serve him even if you get no worldly recognition? Are you willing to give and to give to those who and give to those who he sends across your path, even if they never say thank you and leave when correction is given or when the when the going gets tough? Yes, there is a price to pay for serving the master. But the blessing here and in the word in the word to come far outweighs the sacrifices. Do you love the master Yeshua, our Messiah, our King, more than you love your family or even your children? Don't you don't you realize that he loves your children even more than you do? If he calls you to sacrifice for his kingdom, don't you think he knows how to take care of your children as well? And if you don't, and if you don't know, and if you don't know, you do not know the Father's heart, the Father heart of Yahweh. As we serve Him in prayer, we trust Him to take care of what concerns us. Are you willing to be? Are you willing to be forsaken, humiliated, scorned by your friends and family because you chose to be obedient to His Torah and Yeshua? Many are not. <clears throat> They like to play with the Hebrew things, but they do not want to live what they what they represent or learn what they mean or give up the traditions of men and be obedient to his word. He is using his sword, his ruach, spirit, to separate the sheep from the goats. He is beginning to separate those who love him and serve him from the heart and those who are only given lip service. He is separating those who, who want the Burger King way of life, that they can have it their way from those who are saying, Thy will be done, not mine. As they are as they are as they were captured up toward Shavuot, the disciples made a decision that they were going to serve him his way, not their way. They they, they were not going to be men pleasers, but please him. It is only men who are totally sold excuse me, it is only when we are totally sold out and in one accord with his, as his body, that we will be able to be like those who went before us in the early Messianic community of Acts 2. The model we should strive to follow is that of the early Messianic community who loves Yeshua and the Torah and flow in the gifts of the Ruach HaKodesh. They were not ashamed to make a joyful noise, dance before him, and let his Ruach have his way in their fellowship. We were created to worship him in spirit and in truth. I will not compromise, even in the midst of Babylon. Look at our society today. Today, today, and see if we are not also in the midst of Babylon. Evil is spoken of as good and good as evil. Prayer is illegal in schools. The Ten Commandments are considered not illegal by display. Perversion and homosexuality is, is a protected lifestyle and if you speak against it, it can be considered a hate crime, and you can go to jail in some states. Mainline churches who used to preach the uncompromised word of Yahweh are now ordaining or thinking of ordaining homosexuals as ministers, and they are denying the authority of Yah's word. The Boy Scouts are being pressured to accept homosexuals as leaders. The Judeo-Christian morality is scorned and looked down upon as backward 
and not relevant for today. Abortion, including the hideous partial birth abortion, are considered a woman's right. Save the whale, save the whale, kill a baby, is today's motto. It is okay, society says, to murder babies because if we can't see them, they aren't humans anyway. Maybe they should read Psalms 139. You could be fired from your job if you share the good news with someone. Assisted suicide of the elderly and terminally ill is becoming more acceptable. Witchcraft, sex, homosexuality, and perversion are the main topics of TV today's TV shows. Sex outside of marriage is considered normal. Abstinence or waiting until marriage is considered absurd. Condoms are being passed out to our children in grade schools. And they are being taught that the homosexual, lesbian, gay lifestyle is okay. Stem cell research is being developed to help some types of terminally ill people by harvesting babies from their stem cells and throwing the leftovers in the garbage. The list goes on and on. Yes, I would say that, that we are in the midst of Babylon. So the question is, how will we then live? We all know about the Hebrew boys and how they stood up to the king. We will say the same of a Babylon, a Babylon today. I will not bow down. Go ahead and throw me in the furnace. Will you say that? But I will, I will not bow down to your idols or forsake the word of Yah, even if it means my death. They had no idea they would be delivered. They knew that Yah was able to do it, but as far as they knew, they were doing, they were, they were doing to be burnt to a crisp. But, the, but that, that kind of faith and courage did not go unnoticed by Yah because he was there to deliver them. Now the hair was singed. They did not even smell of smoke. They brought much esteem to the heir of Israel because they would rather suffer death than, com than compromise his word. Even in the midst of a pagan society, we live, we can live a Kodesh set apart life with esteem. The furnace may, may be hot, but the lion may look the, the lion may look mighty hungry, but our heir will be there if we keep him first place in our life and refuse to bow our knees, the world says. The, the world says Satan's ways of living and serve the Kodesh, on, Kodesh, one, the Kodesh one of Israel. John fourteen twenty one says this, Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. And the one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. Second Corinthians 4, 5 to 12 says, For what are we proclaiming for what we are proclaiming is not ourselves, but the Messiah Yeshua as master. We ourselves we ourselves as slaves for you because of Yeshua. For it is Yahweh who once said, Let light shine in the darkness. Who has made his light shine in our hearts? The light of the knowledge of Yah's splendor shining in the face of the Messiah Yeshua. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, so that it would be the evidence that such overwhelming power comes from Yah and not from us. We have all kinds of troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, yet not in despair. Persecuted, yet not abandoned. Knocked down, yet not destroyed. We, care, we always carry in, in our bodies the dying of Yeshua, so the life of Yeshua may be manif manifested in our bodies too. For we are alive, we are alive, we who are alive are always being handed over to death by Yeshua for Yeshua's sake, so Yeshua's life may, might be manifested in our mortal bodies. Thus, death is at work in us for the life in you. Amen. And that was the email from my, my friend, Pastor Jonathan Mickens. Uh, count the Omer. Praise Yah. I pray that you all was blessed by that. Amen. We need to stand in, in the midst of adversity, adversity, adversity and not get weary in doing well. Uh, today, our Bible study is that we're dealing with, with purpose. Uh, one, of the, one, one of the, I heard a, a phrase, the greatest tragedy in life is not death but it's life without reason. And it's dangerous to be alive and not know why you're given life. And I'm afraid that many people in today's time don't know who they are, don't know their purpose, 
And when you don't know your purpose in life, you you uh, you abuse your life. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a class uh, uncovering the Hebrews of Africa. Uh, and, uh, and, and I've been reading uh, in my book, um, man. And I've been reading in my, no, the class is called Uncovering the Hebrew Tribes of Africa. But the book I've been reading is uh, My Only Love Austin is called uh, the, 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 the Biblical Black Destiny, Prophetic Whirlwind, uh, Rediscovering the Black Biblical Destiny. And um, or the biblical black destiny, but um, and the more I read it, the more I look at our people and realize that we don't know who we are, and so we abuse our lives. Um, whether you are Israel by your physical DNA, or whether you are grafted into the covenant promises of Israel, it's very important for you to know who you are and to know your purpose, because when you don't know your purpose, when you don't know who you are, then your life is abused. And the adversary comes with these phrases of, of, of when you do find out who you are, he, he, he allow he, he speak to your mind, and sometimes we say foolish things like, well, it doesn't matter. But it does matter who you are when you find out who you are. Because then you can begin to operate inside your gifts, inside your purpose, and you can begin to be who y'all called you to be. So today, I'm going to read Numbers eighth chapter, and we're going to, we're going to show you something. So um, I'm going to, I'm going to start with Numbers eight, and I'm going to start with um, uh, eight and um, five. It says Yah says to Moshe, take the Levites from among the people of Israel and cleanse them. Here is how you are to cleanse them: speak of purification on them. Have them shave their whole body with a razor and have them wash their clothes and cleanse themselves. Then they are to take a young bull with his grain offering, which is, which is, to, be, uh, which is, which is to be fine flour mixed with olive oil, while you take another bull for a sin offering. And you are, to pre you are to present the Levites in front of the tent of meeting and assemble the entire community of the people of Israel. You are to present the Levites, the Levites before Yah, the people of Israel will lay their hands on them, and I Haron will offer the Levites before Yah as a wave offering from the people of Israel, so that they may do Yah's service. The Levites will lay their hands on the heads of the bulls, the the one you offer will offer as a sin offering, and the other as a burnt offering to Yah to make atonement for the Levites. And you are to place the Levites before Aharon and his sons and offer them as a wave offering before Yah. In this way, you will separate the Levites from the people of Israel, and the Levites will belong to me. Verse 15. After that, the Levites will enter and do the service of the tent of meeting, and you will cleanse them and offer them as a wave offering, because they, because they are entirely given to me from among the people of Israel. I have taken them for myself in place of all those who come first out of the womb, that is, the firstborn males of the people of Israel. For all the firstborn among the people of Israel are mine, both humans and animals. On the day I struck the firstborn in the land of Egypt, I set them apart for myself. But I have taken the Levites in the place of all the firstborn born among all the people for myself, among all the people of Israel. And I have given the Levites to Aharon and his sons from among the people of Israel to do the service of the people of Israel in a tent of meeting and to make atonement for the people of Israel so that no plague will fall on the people of Israel in consequence of their coming too close to the sanctuary. Now, that was the, Le the Levites' purpose. Yah tells Moses, he says, I want you to get the Levites and I want you to bring them before me. I want you to set them apart. I want you to shave them. Hair from off their body. I want you to wash them. Then I want you to get two bulls. One, one for a burnt offering and one for a sin offering. This is Yah's purpose. Then Yah says that, that, he's going, that, he, that he has the people of Israel... And, he, and he's going to have them for himself. 
And they're going to take the, the place of the firstborn. They're taking the place of the firstborn. Now listen. And then they're going to do the service of Yah for the people of Israel. So the purpose of the, the, the Levites was to serve Israel. That was their purpose. The highest authority on earth was the Levitical priesthood. Now we're going to find out y'all's nature. He, he, he wanted them this. This, this, this. this is what he tells Aaron. He says, uh, what he tells Moses. Um, and, and verse, we're going, we're going to go to back to verse 10. He says, you are to present Levites before Yah, and the people of Israel will lay their hands on the Levites. And Aaron will offer the Levites before Yah as a wave offering from the people of Israel. So they may do Yah's service. The land of hand was simicha, was a transference. And what Yah was doing was making the, the Levites accountable for the children of Israel by laying their hands on them. And then the Levites in turn would come before Yah and be presented as a wave offering from the people of Israel so they may do Yah's service. Now listen to this. Then the Levites will lay their hands. The Levites in turn will lay their hands on the head of the bulls. And the one you the one you will offer as a sin offering and the other a burnt offering. So the Levites in turn will lay their hands on the bull as a semicha, as a transference to their sins on that bull. And that bull in turn will be sacrificed and which will atone for the sins, but then the burnt offering is called is what we call an Ola offering. It's called Ola in Hebrew. Uh, it's a burnt offering which brings shalom. So the sin, the sin offering will be given, which will atone, and then they will have shalom for the earth of burnt offering. And and um and then and then they, they, they will begin to do the work of Yah. And 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 and, and that's the sacrificial system. That an innocent creature would pay for the transgressions of the guilty. So, so, so Israel would lay their hands on the Levites. They would come accountable, and in turn, the Levites would lay their hands on 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 the bulls. It was costly, and so now listen to this though. That's the purpose of Israel was to represent Yah to the nations. Because Israel is supposed to be close to the Most High. But the problem is, is that Israel is out of their purpose. As I study uh, about the black, the, the, uh, black biblical destiny, I see some, some of the tribes in Africa um, that still do uh, pagan things. Uh, su such as the Limba tribe. The Limba uh, is, 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 are Jews that's in South Africa. You know, and, and, and they call themselves the Levites. But they still celebrate Christmas. And I see some of and, and, and Christmas and Christmas is pagan. Christmas has nothing to do with with, with, with Yah, with scriptures. It's a sin if, if you are a believer in the most high, whether you are Israel or after then, you should not be celebrating Christmas. Is a form of idolatry. It's vain. It's something that we should not do. And looking at other tribes, when I see them as they begin to walk and, and talk about their being Hebrews, and I see them get water and 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 and, 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 and put water, wash themselves with water, and they, and, they, and some of these tribes consider the water being a deity, which is a sin. And so by and, and by these people doing that, they're still asleep. Even though they call themselves Hebrews, and even though they call themselves one of the tribes, they're still doing things outside of their purpose. Same thing with us. Today, even in America, in North America, some of us who are descendants of the slaves from the transatlantic slave trade, uh, who, who by physical DNA 
aren't really Hebrews. We are the, the, the so-called African-American or the so-called black. But we're still living outside of our purpose. We're still murdering each other. Just today as I got home, my children told me about one of my sons. My son is 17 years old. He just graduated high school. And they told me that one of his friends, who, or one of the guys he knew, who just graduated high school last Monday, died today. Murdered. Shot in his head. You know, that broke my heart because 25 years ago, the same month, on May 25th, one of my best friends was murdered in a drive-by shooting. And it's sad because th th these are Hebrews who are still killing themselves. And we're not even in the lane today because of our disobedience and our lack of love. But, 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 but what's even sadder is that nobody's speaking up about it. We all get in our feelings and get in our emotions and we cry a little bit and we say something got to be done. And then two, three days later, it's over with. We do a candlelight visual in the street and we'll stand out there and we'll, we'll talk to somebody and get their rant and they'll light a candle. And then after the funeral is over, we're back in our sealed houses and we're not doing what it takes to, 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 for our communities. And then we want to have the audacity to say nobody's listening. Well, listen, check yourself. Because our forefathers did not listen to the Most High. It caused us to be exiled. But we yet we still wonder why we're going through these things because we're outside of our purpose. Like I just said earlier, the greatest tragedy in life is not death. It's life without reason. We're living our life and don't understand who we are. And then we, we, we ask Yah, well, who are we? And then when Yah tells us who we are, we deny it. We refuse it. Shame on us. We need to wake up. I just got done reading the Omer. That's what count the Omer. And, 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 and it's saying, are we willing to stand? Are we willing to stand for what's right? To correct someone and then they leave us. You know, to tell the truth and people walk from us. Are we willing? Do we have a fortitude? Because from my perspective, it seems as if many of us don't. You know, but and, and I was to, all day. This is something in my spirit about our purpose. Because the, the Levitical priesthood are the ones, especially the sons of Aaron and the bloodline of Aaron. Uh, they give the sacrifices, and they and, and the high priest has to go behind the veil and and and, and, st and stand in the gap. And intercede on behalf of Israel. And, and, and so then the Levites constantly giving out sacrifices and constantly doing ministry work in the temple on behalf of Israel. And, and, and they took the, flat, the place of the firstborn. And they're accountable. And, and now Israel is supposed to be accountable. Y'all called Israel his firstborn. That's what y'all told, told Pharaoh through Moses. That's my firstborn. And the firstborn is the one that, stand, that stands with authority. And, and you're the big brother. You, you, you're the one everybody looking up to. But it, it, it's so sad that we cannot get in our position. Remember Reuben, Yaakov's firstborn. Yaakov said he was unstable like water when he got ready to give the blessing out because he, because he slept on his father's couch trying to sleep with his concubine. Do we have that mindset? And because of Reuben's disobedience and what he did to, the, to his father, his tribe began to go down. Check out your history. Even Moses had to pray for the tribe of Reuben because the numbers were declining. And do we have that mindset? You know, share this video if you have an opportunity. And, 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 and you need to start shouting and praying, wake up Judah. Because if Judah is supposed to be the ones that's leading, and, and, and if some of, some of the people in America are supposed to be from the tribe of Judah, then why are we killing ourselves? 
Why are we setting such a bad example? We need to wake up. We need to come into our purpose and realize who we are and begin to walk out our destiny that Yah has called us to. It's not about a prosperity gospel that someone is, is, is teaching you about you getting money, you getting rich. And so now your mind is focused on getting something, getting, getting money. When it's not even about that. And a pastor that preaches about you just getting money, he should be ashamed of himself. Because Yeshua says clearly in Matthew 6, don't worry about what you shall wear or drink, what you're going to have. Even a pagan's uh, minds on these things. Yeshua assured them that your heavenly father, he understands full well that you have need of things. But he says, but rather seek ye first the kingdom of Yah and all of his righteousness and the things you need shall be added. So your mind should not be on getting something materialistic, but your mind should be on seeking the kingdom of Yah first. <clears throat> Crying out to him, becoming desperate for him. As the psalmist said, as, as the psalmist said, as the deer pants for the water brooks, so shall my soul, my heart, pant after thee. We should have our mind focusing on pleasing the Most High. Because that's how we're going to get somewhere in life. That's how we're going to be who Yah called us to be. You know, I, I was thinking, as I was doing some study earlier this weekend, or earlier this week, as I was do, and, and, and I saw how some of the people, our people, uh, still in Africa, uh, uh, do witchcraft, and how they worship the sun, and, and, and my mind went back to, to Saul because because that proves who we are. And King Saul, he goes to the witch of Endor. He wants her to conjure up Samuel because he come becomes so desperate. But all Saul had to do was seek Yah. But he does something that the Torah says should bring death because the Torah says you should not suffer a wish to live. But yet he goes to seek this woman out because he wants to raise up Samuel. And the woman raises up a familiar spirit. She brings a demon up. And the demon tells Samuel, Tell, tell Saul that he's going to die. Listen. He got outside of his purpose. He completely went against the Torah. And he hid and disguised himself as if he was someone else. And he, he suffered the consequences. And many of us are the same way that we go against the word of Yah. We do things that we should not do, trying to get a word from the Most High that only leads to our demise. We need to really ask the Most High to show us who we are, what is our purpose, and then get in our purpose. And I mean really in our purpose. And I'm not talking about your purpose as, as from, from the perspective of you being a businessman and you trying to get money, money, money. You trying to be rich and go get it. No. But what is y'all's purpose for your life? What did he call you to do? And then you stand on it. You stand on it. And you do what the Most High do. What the Most High tells you to do. Hallelujah. The, the, the Levites were to be substitutes for the firstborn. So, so the Israel's firstborns tra is transferred to the Levites. The sins that they had on the bulls, the bulls are sacrificed. Yeshua is our, is our sacrificial lamb. He, he is the great high priest. He is the one responsible for us to send us into the, in the gap. And we need to turn toward him and really begin to live out the purpose that Yah has called us to. Because not living in our purpose causes us to live in sin. And I mean horrible sin. When you look around, most, most of our people, especially the young people, 
a drug a drug addicts. It's horrible. And I, 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 I'm not just talking. About, I'm not just talking about marijuana. And you can have your opinion about marijuana. That's your opinion. But I think I believe that anything that, that that brings your mind from reality, you should not do. If it's used for medical purposes, then let it be used for medical purposes, not for you just getting high. Because that's that's a lame excuse. But I'm talking about also pills. Most of our children are on Xanax and lower tabs, oxycodone, all kind of uh, mor morphine pills. They walk around, they call it getting geeked. And they walk around getting high. Some of my young adults are too. And that now in Alabama, we have we have a hair a heroin outbreak. They want to get high, and these young folks shooting up heroin. It, it, it's horrible. And we it, we get high, they, 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 and, and now we, we think it's okay for our, for for to be a homosexual. And it's a sin to be a homosexual. I'm not saying that y'all don't love you. He loves you. But he don't love the sin. And, 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 and being a homosexual is unacceptable in the eyes of the Most High. Then being a believer and you are pro-choice. You should not be pro-choice. A human life is a human life. Period. Abortion is wrong. If you don't want to have an abortion, then quit having sex outside of a wedlock. Stop spreading your legs, young ladies. Stop laying down with them, young men. If we're going to be real, let's be real. That's not who you are. It's not your purpose to be promiscuous, trying to have sex with everybody. We should be trying to pass out condoms. We should teach be virgins. Peer pressure. Know who you are. You don't have to be embarrassed. Embarrassment is a choice. Believe me, as a young person now, doing wrong, it does catch up with you. And if you don't get your life on track, oh man, become my age and not, and not have your life on track. Ask, ask a 40-year-old man now that does not even have a GED how easy is his life. Ask the person now in their forties and fifties, how how well is it to rebel against your parents? Does it work out well with you? Go to the prison and ask a young man that 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 that, that, that should listen that that's got fifty years in the penitentiary for robbery. Does do he want to be at home now? Do he wish he would have listened? When a judge hand you down. Time like handing out candy. Young man, 17, 18, 19 years old, get 99 years sentence, 25 years sentences. Spending 25 years in the penitentiary at, 99, at 19 years old, coming out at, at 50, 40 years old. Whole childhood locked up because he couldn't listen. Go to the prison to ask them. Go to the cemeteries and look over in the cemeteries. And imagine how many people died outside of their purposes. Amen. Hallelujah. I guess this is one of those messages that's not so-called popular. But we don't seek popularity. We want to live right. We want to please the Most High. We want to come before Him and don't want to hear Him tell me that He don't know me. And I'm pretty sure if you're listening that you don't want to hear the Most High tell you He don't know you. You want to have a relationship. Yeshua says in John 17 to give Him eternal life. And eternal life is this, to know Yah. But he says also in Matthew 7, beginning at verse 21, that those who prophesy in his name, who cast out devils in his name, who lay hands on sick in his name, he's going to tell them to depart from him. You workers of lawlessness, I never knew you. That word lawlessness is, is somebody who's outside of the law, who's outside of Torah. He's going to tell them, I never knew you. That word is a nomos. Look it up in the Greek then. Because if you are a lawless individual, then you cannot know the Most High. So for somebody to tell you, we don't follow the Torah, they're a lie, and I would run from them if I was you. You still have to follow the Torah. You know, it doesn't matter who get on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, or whatever social media outlet, or TBN. If they tell you you don't follow the Torah, you stop hearing them because they're telling you a lie. The Torah don't save. No, but Yeshua saves. 
but the Torah is always given to redeem people as the pattern of the Most High. Listen to this, read the word for yourself and quit going on somebody else's word. When you look at Exodus, y'all gave them the Torah after he brought them out of Egypt. Look at it. He, he had Passover. Then he had the Feast of Massa. Then he gave them Shavuot. Everybody's so caught up on Pentecost. Pentecost Sunday. But when you really look at it, y'all gave them the Torah on Pentecost, if you want to use that word, on Shavuot. When you look, look at Acts, there was Shavuot. They, they, they were given the word of the Most High. These are redeemed people who followed Yeshua. So we still have to go by and follow Torah. We still have to live and obey the Torah. We, we have to. It's Yah's word. There was no such thing as a New Testament in Yeshua's day. There was no such thing as a New Testament in Paul's day. They went on the scripture. They had the Tanakh, the Torah, the Naveen and Ketavim, the Torah, the writers and the prophets. They follow what, what Leviticus had wrote. They, they, they follow Abraham's story. They follow Exodus. They follow they followed Numbers. They followed Deuteronomy. They followed the prophets. They followed Daniel. But when you don't know your purpose, you don't follow Torah, you ruin your life. The only thing that's going to help you to stand is the word of Yah. Wake up, Israel. Wake up, Messianic community. Quit being divided. That's what got us in the where we are right now. Can't get along. Looking down upon others. Not showing love. The greatest command is to love Yah with all your heart, with all your might, with all your strength, all your resources. And the second command is like in that one love your neighbor as yourself. Yeshua says, On this, hates all the Torah and the prophets. So the foundation is a hive, it's love. To give yourself for another. To get past you. We need to grow up, we need to wake up, we need to live right. We need to come into our purpose and find out who we are. We should be tired of, of, of losing each other. We should be tired of, of losing our youth. We should be tired in our congregations, making a mockery out of y'all, trying to entertain by our voice. Listen here, it, don't, it, 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 it does not matter how well you can teach. It does not matter how well you can sing. If you don't have love, you what you're doing is in vain. If you don't follow the Most High, what you're doing is in vain. Of course, y'all this with every individual on their level of comprehension. Everybody goes at different paces. And he does give grace. But grace doesn't give you an excuse to sin. As a matter of fact, when you experience Yah's grace, it should cause you to deny ungodliness. Because you realize what he spared you from. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you have an understanding of what you could have been or what could have happened. But he spared you, gave you another opportunity to live for him and reconcile you to himself through Yeshua. Mm -hmm. So the grace should cause you to deny ungodliness, not give you an excuse to go fornicate. Not give you an excuse to rebel against your parents. Not give you an excuse to dishonor Sabbath. The grace should not give you an excuse to eat a pork chop, shrimp, and catfish. But it should cause you to look at this marvelous, most high Elohim and turn from your sins to come back to him. Hallelujah. We need to live right. We need to come into our purpose. Ask him to help us. No, it's not easy. It does take work, but we can do it. It's not grievous. The word says we can do all things through the Mashiach that gives us strength. Let's go to Philippians 4. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, we, our hearts need to turn back to Yah. The word says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, 
Turn from your sin then. Seek Yah's face. He will heal. He will hear. He will hear. He will hear from heaven. He'll heal the land. Amen. So we said we're called by Yah's name. Do we need to humble ourselves? Stop walking in pride. Arrogance. One thing that Yah hates is a proud look. Someone that has an overestimation of themselves. The word says that he resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. So you need to ask yourself, how are you walking? <laughs> huh? Ask yourself, how are you walking? Hallelujah. Let's go to Philippians 4 and 12. You ready? Hallelujah. Since I know what it is to be in want. And I know what it is to have more than enough. In everything and in every way, I have learned the secret of being full and being hungry, of having abundance and being in need. I can do all things through him who gives me power. You do all things through who? Through him that gives you power. He, the Apostle Paul says, I've learned what it is to be in want. And I've learned what it is to have more than enough. This is somebody who's not walking in pride. This is somebody who's not walking in, in an overestimation of, your, of, of themselves. But this is somebody who's walking in the power of Yah. To understand that even though I might have enough right now, I still realize what it was when I didn't have anything. Even though I'm full right now, I still realize what it was when I was hungry. And I understand in my position that when I was hungry and I couldn't provide for myself, that I was still able to endure. I was still able to persevere. I was still able to overcome. So then therefore, in regards to what state I'm in now, I can do all things through him who gives me the power. We need to learn how to walk in humility. Really ask y'all to show us our purpose. And, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm saying this not out of being arrogant. Arrogant. But I'm saying this out of experience. That I've asked the Most High to show me what my purpose is. And let me tell you this. I've asked him to show me that from the standpoint of of thinking I was going to be great. Fly around the world and have the crowd. <coughs> They're going to look at me. I'm going to be preaching. And I'm going to be famous. With that understanding. So I'm saying y'all. Put me. Well, I wasn't, I, I wasn't even saying y'all then. I'm saying God. Because I really didn't even know his name. I wasn't even calling his name. Just calling him God. Put me in my purpose. Show me what my purpose is. I want to have the money. I want to go and I want to get the, the big old car. And I want to get the nice house that's on the hill and the boat is on the lake at the bottom of the hill with the house on top. I want to have the money, 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 money. Like, like the songwriter say, the mean green. That was my mindset. And the more I'm asking him to show what my purpose is, the more he's stripping me of myself and making my life uncomfortable when I want to live for myself. So when I asked him to show what my purpose is, he began to show me the Hebraic way. That was very uncomfortable. Ask him to show me who I who, who am I? Show me my purpose. And so I'm asking him to show me who I am in him. Who am I? Who am my purpose that he tells me I'm a Hebrew? What? That ain't what I'm asking. That is what you're asking. Show me my purpose in you. He tells me to honor the Sabbath. Show me my purpose. Put down the pork ribs. Stop eating the pork chop. Start eating clean. Start earning my Sabbath. Start keeping my feast days. Stop celebrating Easter. Stop celebrating Thanksgiving. Stop celebrating Christmas. Show me my purpose. And the more I ask him to show me 
my purpose, the more he stripped from me. Me. And it was not, it was not comfortable. But I was willing to be obedient to the most high. Did I lose friends? I lost family members. Lost family members who thought we was crazy. Started calling my sons Habib, making fun of them. We're still pushing into our purpose. So going to your purpose may not be comfortable. Going to your purpose may cause you to lose people. May cause people to persecute you. But I tell you, it's well, it's well worth it. Because it brings shalom with the most high. It brings shalom to your mind. He begins to open doors and put you in your purpose and give you the opportunity to witness to others. He causes you to have an abundant life. And I'm not talking from the point of having a bunch of money. I'm talking to shalom and your needs met through him. He calls you to stop complaining. Stop walking around depressed. <coughs> because he causes your trust to grow in him. Because he causes you to, have to dig in to the word. To learn the word. And trust comes by hearing. And hearing by the word. So when you start going through trials, and you start going through tests, you stand firm. Because you realize your forefather Abraham went through it. You realize how the patriots went through it. You realize how you got brothers around the world that's going through it. And you realize how, 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 how Yeshua HaMashiach went through it. And you begin to see their mistakes, their shortcomings. But you also see their deliverance. And when you begin to see what your purpose is and, you put your, and, and who you are in the word, you can put yourself in the scriptures. And then you can see the word from a whole other perspective. And understand the word, it's not about making money. It's not about being rich. You may never get the big old house. You may never get the boat on the lake. But one thing that you can have is the most high. And he'll put you in his purpose for your life. And he'll take your cares off of you and put them on himself. Or you can cast your cares off and put them on him because he does care for you. And it calls you to walk in obedience. Hallelujah. Y'all, we thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your loving kindness. We ask you, y'all, to teach us to walk in our purpose. Help us to know who we are, to know our purpose in you. Help us, y'all, to come into the understanding of our responsibility and to begin to take it seriously. Help us to love beyond just words but to love in action and in deed. Help us to stand firm, Yah, and do your will. We thank you for loving on us. Thank you for keeping us and having mercy on us. And even at times, we can end our ignorance. But we thank you for allowing us to learn so we can no longer remain ignorant and we can turn from things that don't please you. Yah, we thank you for keeping us. Thank you for being our friend. Thank you for being our strength. And we glorify you, and we bless you, in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Shalom, everyone.